Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a 3D signpost with hover effects in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right. So the first thing we're going to do here is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and then click on add new. Next, we're going to give a page a name and I'm just going to call this create 3D signpost with hover effects in Divi. But of course, you can name this page whatever you want. All right, so now it's time to go to the Divi Builder. So I'm going to click here on Use Divi Builder. Right, so here we have uh, three options. I'm just going to build this from scratch. So before we start designing this, I'd like to say if you want this layout, you can also go to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below, and you can pretty much just download it and import it into your own design. So that's if you don't want to build this step by step. And also the other thing that you're also going to need is a little square of 25 pixels by 25 pixels. You can create this using a software like Photoshop or Illustrator. Okay, so with that said, now let's go ahead and start working on this. So the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to go to the row settings. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. So here we're going to, so we're going to add one column and then we're going to go into the row settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon. Next, we're going to come over here to background and this is where we need to add that little tiny rectangle. So I'm going to come over here to the third tab click this plus button and here it is. I'm just going to click on it and upload an image. So over here by default, it comes in as a background uh, image size cover. And then we need to set this to actual size. And then we need to go to background image repeat and we want to make sure repeat Y vertical is selected. Now let's go to the design tab because here we need to go and set our gutter width. So here, first of all, I'm going to activate this, set this to yes, and then we're going to drag the slider down until we get one. So this takes away all the uh, space on the sides of our column. Next, I am going to set my maximum width to 980 pixels. So I'm going to enter it here. Next, I need to add some custom padding. So I'm going to scroll down here until I get to spacing. So here I'm going to add two VW. Now this value needs to be both to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to activate my chain. And then next I'm going to add this CSS code. So this allows us to have a perspective. All right. So the next stage is adding some CSS code. So to do that, we are going to just save this. And then we're going to go back in here because what we need to do is to actually go into the column. So I'm going to click on this gear icon and click on the advanced tab, custom CSS, and this needs to go in the main element. So here's the CSS code. It's perspective 1000 pixels. Now, if you want to use the exact same code as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So moving on, it's time now to add the blurb module. So I'm going to save this and save one more time. Click this plus button and add my blurb. So first of all, I'm just going to reduce this text because it's a bit too much. And then over here where it says image and icon, uh, we want to use an icon instead. So I'm just going to come over here and click on use icon. And the icon I'm going to go with is this arrow pointing to the left. The next stage is to add a background color. So I'm just going to come over here, click this plus button and just paste my color in here. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So now that we have the background color, let's go ahead and customize the icon color. So I'm going to click here on design image and icon, and I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here, just like that. Now, the icon placement here is uh, set to the top by default. We want this arrow to the left. So I'm going to select left. And we also need to customize the size of this icon. So I'm going to click here on use icon font size. And I'm going to set this to 80 instead of the 9 to 6 default. Now, over here on the text, uh, let's set our text orientation to center. And now it's time to customize our text. So we're going to start with our title font text. So here we're going to change this and uh, let's choose a font called Playfair. So here it is, Playfair display. I'm going to set my color here, paste it in place. I'm also going to change the size. 
So by default, it's on uh, 18. So we need to set this to 38. And then we need to come over here to sizing. So here on uh, max width, currently we have it set to none. So what we need to do is to set this to 600 pixels. And we also need to align this module center. Right, so as you can see here, our, te our text here is pretty much um, way too close to the edge here. So let's add some padding to this. So I'm gonna come over here, click on spacing, and we're going to add padding of 5% both to the top and the bottom, and also left and right. Now over here for the text alignment, we're gonna come here and align right. And for the title as well, we're going to align this to the right. Now let's add some rounded corners. So I'm going to click on border. And for our value here, it's gonna be 20 pixels. And we're also going to add a border width. And this is going to be three pixels. And we're also going to add a color. So I'm gonna click here and paste my color just like that. Now for this to really look like a signpost, we need to add some perspective to this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to transform and then we're gonna go with transform rotate. So over here, we're gonna set this to 20 degrees. So now that we have this one all set, I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to duplicate this two more times. And then all I have to do is to go back into this one here, click on the module settings, design, transform, transform rotate. And then here, we're gonna set this to minus 30. I'm gonna save this for now. And then here on the last one, we're gonna set this to 40 degrees. So I'm gonna come over here to click on design, transform, transform rotate, set this to 40 degrees. So for now I'm gonna save, and then we're gonna come over to uh, this second one here because we need to change the direction of the arrow. So I'm gonna click here on uh, settings. So first of all, we need to go to the text orientation and change this. So I'm gonna click here on text. So this time our alignment is gonna to be to the left. So I'm gonna to go to body text, set this to the left, and we're also going to do the title as well. So I'm gonna select it here, set it to the left, and then this arrow needs to be pointing to the right, so I need to reverse that as well. So I'm gonna click here on this little icon, and icon placement here. In fact, we need to choose a different arrow here. So let's go to our content, image and icon, and this is the one we want. So as you can see, this is pointing the opposite direction. Right, so the next thing we're gonna do is to rotate these to back to the original um, setting. So to do that, we want to use the hover effect. So I'm gonna save this, and then I'm gonna click here on this gear icon. So in order for us to have this animation, we need to uh, click on design, and then we need to come over here to transform. So for this to work, you want to click on transform rotate. And then as you can see, I've activated the hover state. So on hover, what you want to do is to set this to zero degrees on hover, and then on default, that's where it's at 20, okay? And then once you've done that, you wanna go ahead and save, and then over here, you wanna do the same, just go in here into the gear icons, design, transform, and then on the hover tab, you wanna make sure that this is set to zero because that's the default state, okay? I mean the hover state. And on the default, it's minus 30. And then you want to do the same for the last one as well, so that when you hover over it, it goes back to its default state. Right, so the next stage is to add a background image to our design. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon, click on background, and then I'm gonna go for the third tab. So this is where you want to add your image. So the image I'm gonna go with is this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it, and then click upload an image. But of course you can choose any image that you want. So I'm gonna go with this one for my design. Now for parallax, we're gonna use yes, and then you can either use true parallax or you can just choose CSS. Okay, so with this done, let's take, a, uh, let's take a look at our final design. So I'm gonna click on save changes, I'm gonna hit publish and exit the visual builder. Okay, so this is our design. So you can see when I hover over it, it just rotates. 
So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. And if you have any questions, you can always leave your questions in the comments box below and I'll do my best to respond to them. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.